Now I've been a filmmaker for almost 10 years and a lot of my time has been with professional athletes from bodybuilders, MLB players, NBA players, NFL, UFC fighters, and over a hundred professional boxers, including Lomachenko and some of your favorite household names. During this time, I've gone through countless camera and rig setups and I've quickly learned the necessity of having a lightweight, nimble, and versatile rig. Today I'm gonna to show you my Sony FX6 2024 build because it is way different from last year's build that I showcased on the channel. But first, let's get this up to proper height so I could go over the versatility and all the new parts and some of the old ones that have stayed on this rig setup. Now, first things first, let's go over what I'm still using for my previous build. And just know if you wanna check out any of the items, they'll be listed in the description below. Those are affiliate links. I get a little bit of a kickback. Now for the cage, I am still rocking the Tilta cage. And although the Condor blue one that came out recently looks really intriguing, there really is no reason why I should be buying it besides the fact that I want it. I still have the V-mount plate. That's part of the Tilta cage. Everything's working fine. The only thing I've added in the past year was the proprietary dovetail plate so I can balance my FSB4 fluid head better with this setup. If you are running some sort of base plate and a tripod system, a dovetail is a must. Now I'm also still using my Tilta map box for four by five panes, but I really want the Condor blue one with the multiple stages. That looks super unique to map boxes in general. And that's something I will be picking up at some point this year. On the base plate, I have a pair of 16 inch rails. We have a bunch of different sizes for different needs. For this situation and setup, I'm using the rails so that not only can I use this with my shoulder pad, that's a universal one, but when I'm not using say native E-mount glass and I wanna run PL, I can have my focus motor or my zoom motor or even both set on the front rails. Recently, I made my Cineback rig build and a lot of you guys got upset that I had a pair of rails on my base plate and for that demo, I wasn't using the rails. Guys, don't be so uptight. Just because, say, in one situation, I'm not showcasing the rails being used, doesn't mean for other situations I'm not using rails. Let's be real here. You keyboard warriors just go a little bit too crazy sometimes, and you guys just need to shut up. And like mentioned for this demo, we are using the 24 to 70 G Master Mark II because I love the versatility of this lens. And when using it with clear image zoom, that 70 becomes a 105 for a little bit extra reach. And that brings us to talking about reach, some new accessories on this side. On the AC side of the camera, I added the small rig extension arm and the remote relocator. This way when I'm going shouldered up, I can have the handle down here, access to my zoom rocker, my hot buttons, my autofocus toggle on and off, my eye autofocus toggle on and off, my start stop, all the good stuff I have at the ability of that side. Now I know you guys are gonna call me out because there isn't one on the left side, there's one on the way, but I have been using it with just the right side option. And I've had zero issues with, you know, my horizon being on level, just having one. And I'll show you in just in a minute why. Now getting back to the extension arm, I do like the fact that we have this rosette that we could change the position. We also have this little slot right here that we could extend or shorten the arm. I just have my cable tied down so I can't really go fully extended right now, but you guys get the point. Now, being that we're on this side of the camera, let's talk about the audio setup. I'm still using the Sennheiser MKE 600. I love this shotgun microphone. I did upgrade the XLR cable to the Condor Blue right angle to right angle. It's a nice short cable, it's braided. I just wanted something different and updated. Now, one thing I'm using currently to record the audio on my FX3 is the DJI camera adapter. The nice thing when using it with the Sony FX6, and I just made a video, it will be listed somewhere up here for you guys to see how you can use the audio, specifically the DJI Mic 2 audio on the hot shoe and get separate 
left and right channels. So if you have two people mic'd up, your channel three and four are each getting a track on it, not together. If you wanna check that out, like I said, it's listed up there just a second ago. Now let's get to the good part. This is one of my favorite upgrades recently, and that is the Condor Blue LCD screen clamp. This clamp gets rid of that plastic cheap one that I always feel like I'm gonna break on the Sony FX6, and it gives us one with a ton of versatility. Now, it mounts right here on your mount, I guess, for the LCD monitor. We have some on the back and one on the front. It goes right on the front. It has a nice O-ring that you can change not only the height of, but you could also take this NATO rail and you could extend or you can bring closer the LCD screen. Another really cool thing that you can do is have the ability to rotate the screen from here so it's nice and smooth. Everything just feels robust. And I believe we have quarter 20. Yep, we have two quarter 20 options on the front of this. So if you wanna put maybe a cable tie down, you can. Now, speaking of cable tie downs on my cage, I have some XL Mondo ties and regular size ones. This way, when I'm running my monitor on the top, I can have the cables nicely tucked. Now, if we take a look at this side, I know the cable management isn't the best. I'm still trying to figure out how to, I guess, locate this remote cable, being that it's extra long and I understand why it's long. I just wanna tie it down better. It does look a little messy over here as well, just because I still have my SDI cable and my power cable to my port keys, five inch BM5 monitor, which I usually run on a setup. Now, the reason why I'm not running that external monitor is because I want to keep the profile of this relatively low when I'm shouldered up. Now let's talk about the versatility of using this as a shoulder rig, how I use it as a handheld rig, and how it could quickly come on and off this pair of sticks that I'm using right here. So just for a demo, if I want, I can take this off in just a second and go shouldered up. Now I can have my shoulder rig set up basically going. The nice thing about this is we have it nice and tucked. I can use my head as a third point of contact. And now I can get this LCD screen anywhere I want. I can take my left hand, being that I don't have a left hand arm just yet, and I can keep it on the zoom of the lens. This way, if I wanna zoom, I can. And if say I wanna tap to focus or change any settings, I have the ability to do so. All while keeping it nice and compact, head against it as a point of contact with the shoulder and the arm, that's three points, a fourth one either here or here. And now we can go however we want and we're nice and mobile and we're stable. If I want to, I can take this off, I can rotate this here, and now I can go handheld whichever way I want to. I could point it this way, I could get down low, rotate it towards me, I could get up nice and high, and we can even hold it like this from the side if you have long arms like me, but now you can hold it like this and you could get your shot. To go back onto the sticks, all I simply have to do is literally, that's it. And now it's not going anywhere. And if I want to get, say, a quick low shot, now we can drop down pretty low and get our shot. If I want to get this off really quick, right back up to the shoulder. And now we're bringing this down to eye level. And now we're shouldered back up super nicely once again back to the sticks here we go we're locked in place ready to go now i will be making a separate video coming up soon on the sackler flowtech 75 with the fsb4 head this is an industry standard when it comes to run and gun documentary or just lightweight tripods that need to be nimble and mobile and that's my 2024 
shoulder rig, run and gun, docu style setup. Now this might change a little bit. Maybe I'll put my five inch monitor on at some point or something like that. But overall, the way it is now, it's very lightweight. It does look a little robust, I promise you. It's very nimble. And just the fact that we can easily detach it, put it right back on and get it mounted up is a really nice benefit to have. And that's why you'll see a lot of documentary DPs or, you know, run and gun filmmakers and TV shows and stuff like that using this pair of sticks. It's just a really nice thing to have. So that wraps up my 2024 FX6 run and gun docu style build setup. Let me know in the description below what you think of it, what I could use to improve on it. And if there's any new FX6 accessories that you've recently picked up, I definitely wanna hear about it. If you thought the video was helpful, leave a thumbs up, really helps out the channel. And until next time, I'm Jason Anthony, peace out.